that there's a potential that we may need gold and silver as a currency again someday, especially, you know, listen, Trump, does, I think if Trump does a great job, maybe he can solve some of the problems. But if we don't continue what he starts, then the dollar, as you said, is nothing but a mountain of debt. Well, I think that the sell-off in gold and silver were natural. I mean, we were so overbought from a, an extension. I mean, if you looked at the chart, I mean, they were going parabolic. Now, you know, the markets in either direction, especially commodities. You know, commodities are not stocks. They're not going away. They don't have earnings to worry about. They have production. And I think that you saw a massive rally that took over 2800 in gold. It took us up in over $35 in silver. You're getting a natural pullback. I think you're looking for a buying opportunity. I said last week on my call that I thought that 2600 was really in play for an opportunity to come in and buy silver or gold. I think that 30 bucks is a spot to buy silver. I think that they're going nothing but higher over time. But markets don't are not healthy when they go straight in one direction. They have to have, as they call it, backing and filling. Some sellers have to come in, some profits need to be taken to allow new money to come in and new buyers to want to chase into the market. And I think that's exactly what you're seeing. I, I think that even Bitcoin up by 5,000 again. I mean, we're up over 80,000. I wouldn't be surprised if next week you would see Bitcoin at 70,000. There's going to be a pullback. When you come back here, you have to understand the complexion of markets and how they work. And they work between buyers and sellers and price discovery. And at some point, the buyers are loaded up and everybody's chased them as far as they can go. And then they look and there's no buyers to be found. They have no one to sell to. So the markets will drop. I think we saw that in, in gold. I think we saw that in silver. I think you'll see it in Bitcoin. I think you see it in all commodities that get overpriced at a certain point because there's a certain price and there's an old cent in the commodity space. High prices will cure high prices and low prices will cure low prices. And I think right now we're seeing the high prices cured first. I think they're very bullish. They're very great opportunities. But you have to look for where is a spot for you. And the other thing you have to remember is, and I'm a big buyer of physical metals, not paper metals, because I don't think there's enough gold in the world to cover the amount of paper that is written on it. But if you're buying physical metals, that means you're buying it with money that you can afford to hold on to. Because if you're forced to sell it, if you're buying it with money you don't have and you're forced to sell it, you're not going to get the price or the appreciation that you want. That is what too many people believe. They try to buy in at the hot stock, the hot commodity, and they want to get rich when this is not a get rich quick business. This is a business of understanding value and where is the greatest likelihood and the greatest probability of movement in your favor. Bearish for oil price tonight. Here's the here's the trick. And I did not know this. But I found I researched this and found this out that we produced more oil last year than ever before. Unfortunately, we're shipping our oil to China and other places and not using it ourselves, although it's heavier. There's a whole refinery thing, but let's not forget, let's forget about that. And we're buying from OPEC and Saudi Arabia, the criminals that want to steal from us. So because of all the political BS that goes on and the, the, the perks that our government gets by buying and making us overpay for oil, remember when Trump left office, crude oil was at $35 a barrel. Okay, we need to be able to rebuild our refiners and bring back and use our own oil. I mean, the United States is one country that could be totally self-sufficient. We could be an island. We don't really need the rest of the world. Okay, we could be self-sufficient with what we have here. I mean, we have at current usage over a 300-year supply of oil right now. Okay, we have an abundance of natural gas. I think when Trump gets in and we start dealing with OPEC in the, the right way, which is telling them to go, you know what, I think that prices are going to drop down. And I think we'll see oil come down. I don't think that'll make the profits of the oil companies come down because they'll be producing more and they'll be making more on quantity versus trying to deal with what's going on. And I think that is the bigger issue. I do think that oil will come down significantly because I think that is the big cure for the inflationary and for the the flaws of the Fed with their rate cuts, which is doing going to do nothing more than increase inflation. Well, from an, a long-term point of view, uh, I continue to be very bullish on gold. Why? Because it's the only financial asset that's not simultaneously somebody else's liability, with the possible exception of Bitcoin, which I think is gaining more and more credibility all the time. And I'm afraid that the dollar is in a death spiral. Uh, it's an IOU nothing on the part of a bankrupt government. And uh, it's very nice that we're experiencing mourning in America uh, under Trump. 
for a while, but mourning only lasts for six hours. And the unsound fundamentals under the economy uh, will, will reassert themselves. The, the main thing with gold is it, it's not what the traders do in New York or what the public does in the U.S public in the U.S. is still totally uninterested in gold. It's what the other central banks in the world, besides the uh, Fed, are doing. And they don't want to hold on to dollars. Uh, they realize that the dollar is a hot potato issued by a, uh, an out-of-control bankrupt government. So they're selling their dollars and they're buying gold. They need an asset, and that is gold. So uh, I continue to be a bull on gold. Uh, I continue to be a bull on silver as well, because when the public does get the bit in its teeth, silver is the poor man's gold, and it's a much, much smaller market uh, than gold. Uh, there's not a lot of inventory. All the gold that's ever been mined is still above ground, not true with silver. So it's uh, it's got a lot more upside potential. And... Uh, as far as oil is concerned, uh, uh, hydrocarbons uh, are the only intelligent way to get uh, uh, power uh, these days, with the exception of nuclear, uh, of course. Uh, but they're not doing anything on nuclear currently. So uh, I think oil consumption is going to continue going up. Uh, I'm bullish on oil, much more bullish on natural gas. Uh, relative to the price of oil, it's very, very cheap. So uh, that's how I'm playing uh, energy. I'm playing it with uh, natural gas and also uranium because uh, nuclear really is the safest, the cheapest, and the cleanest form of, uh, of mass power generation. And reality will eventually come out. So. Yeah, I completely sure, agree with are you. Are you sure, there. Doug, that they'll ever see reality in this country? <laughs> well, no, that's, that's, that, that's true, because we have to remember almost half of the people in the country voted for uh, Kamala, so um, maybe they won't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jesse, can I ask Doug one quick question? Of course. Uh, J Doug, I, I, have a, I have a belief there's a potential that we may need gold and silver as a currency again someday, especially, you know, listen, Trump, does, I think if Trump does a great job, maybe he can solve some of the problems. But if we don't continue what he starts, then the dollar, as you've said, is nothing but a mountain of debt. OK, and I am of the belief that at some point we may need gold and silver as a currency again to actually trade and buy, buy goods and services. Do you have any thought to that? Totally agree with you. Uh, gold is going to be reinstituted as a currency, not just between countries, uh, because uh, the Chinese and the Russians and the Indians, they don't want to use each other's funny money to trade with each other, and they certainly don't want to use the dollar either. So they're going to go back to gold, and it has to be at a much higher price, I think. And I'd love to see gold being used again, as it was before 1933, in the U.S. and all over the world. In fact, I'd like to see all these stupid central banks abolished. They serve no useful purpose. They're Amen, brother. Inflation. <laughs> so no, I'm in complete agreement on that, Bubba. I, I think the central banks should be gone as well. I'm, I'm, in, I, I'm with Ron Paul there. If we're not going to eliminate it, at least have a, a true and honest audit, which we never get.